Hi there, just wanted to do a quick follow-up video on the state of Linux on the Lenovo Legion Go. So this is on the latest Unstable Chimera OS, and there's been some fixes that I think make it much more usable. So for, uh, for starter, um, in the previous video, I went over how during suspend, during the suspend animation, the sound would get really glitchy and buggy. Um, that is now fixable if you just install Deki and install this pause games plugin. If you pause before suspend, it will make it so that suspend works basically perfectly. So you can now see when I suspend, it should just cleanly cut out with no glitchy sound. So um, I will say that I've used suspend resume a lot now and it's working perfectly fine. So let's just resume again and go right back in. Cool. All right. Uh, next up, in my previous video, I went over how you couldn't access the Steam menu, the Quick Access menu, and other menus. That is now accessible. So this Legion button and this Legion button, these the left and right ones, they don't work when you press them individually. But this left Legion button works fine if you press it along in combination with any of the four face buttons. So I press Legion A, it brings us up the Quick Access menu. I press Legion B, it'll bring up the Home menu. If I press Legion X, it brings up the keyboard. Now, there is a chance if you've used Windows on this, um, if it updated the controller firmware, there's a chance your Legion B shortcut won't work in Linux anymore. If that's the case, you can still remap the Legion X and A to whatever you need them to be. So in this case, if your Legion B is broken, you probably remap the Legion X to be your home, your home menu. As for the Legion Y, the Legion Y actually cycles through your power mode. So this is for TDP control. So if you press Legion Y, it'll swap through the different power modes, and that's how you could control TDP. Um, it's very basic, but it gets the job done. So let's just exit this game. And you can see here, this, these are actually the, the TDP values for those different modes, where the blue LED is blue, as right now we're on purple. Purple is custom. It says that it's 5 to 30 watts, but I've noticed that it's much higher. It's going to be like... It's going to be on the higher end, like 30 watt TDP. It's not really like on the lower end. Um, but nonetheless, um, there is TDP control available. If you need more fine grain TDP control, um, there you, there are like Deki plugins and other software, but they're not all updated yet. There is this simple Ryzen TDP app, which gives you very basic TDP control. Um, it's fine for what it is. It's meant to be more of like a backup option. In this case, this is re if you really do need really fine grain TDP control, as it, as you could see. It's a very basic TDP controls, um, nothing fancy yet. Um, so that's that. So in my previous video, I also mentioned how none of the back buttons are working. Um, it turns out you can get them working, but it requires, um, it's not the most ideal solution, but basically if you boot up Windows, if you set any of the back buttons in Windows, it carries over to Linux, um, which is interesting. But if I see, if you, I've already mapped them to buttons just so you could see, so you could see, this, I mapped uh, this button here to start, select, and then here I just mapped like A and B. So you can see A and B. Um, of course, you can map them to whatever you like in Windows and it'll persist into Linux. Ideally, it'll eventually be possible to set them in Linux as well, but for now, you can set the back button. So all the back buttons are usable. Unfortunately, it also means that you're limited to whatever you can set them in Windows. And in Windows, you could only set them to A, B, X, Y, basically any controller button. So it's a little limited in how you could use it, but it's possible to use. As you might also imagine based on that, other settings you change in Windows will also be affected on Linux. So I turned off the RGB lights in Windows. So the stick RGBs, the controller uh, RGB lights, once you turn it off in Windows, it stays off in, in Linux. Um, so if you want to turn them off because they're too bright at night, it's totally possible to do so. But yeah, besides that, um, there's other things that are just they were working in the previous video and they haven't changed. So FPS mode still works. Um, what's it called? Um, detachable controllers still work. And just, yeah, I don't know. Everything's working very smoothly. I would say that this is basically, uh, you could use this as a daily driver, no problem. You have access to all the basic functionality you need for gaming. You could access all the menus, You have all the controls work. Um, even the detached controllers work. Um, also, I, I guess I forgot to mention this in the last video, the, the trackpad works, um, but you can't click with it, which is unfortunate, but um, the trackpad does work. And the scroll wheel does also work as well. So that back scroll wheel here, if I just scroll, uh, I need to find a menu where I can actually use it, but here we go, there you go. So you can actually scroll with the scroll wheel as well. Not really useful in games, but 
it's there. Um, there's currently no way to remap it in Chimera OS um, by default. You can like hack together a way to remap it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But nonetheless, um, if you like the Steam Deck experience, um, I think everything's in a pretty nice, fairly functional state. Things are not ideal. There's definitely things that could still be improved. For example, um, if I go into the quick access menu, um, and here some of these settings, the SteamOS settings, aren't really functional very well. And for the refresh rate, you should never set anything in between, never set anything in between 60 and 144. If you do like 75, the screen will get all messy and like basically you need to hook up an external screen to fix it. Um, the refresh rates, the only valid refresh rates are 144 and 60. Um, so there's definitely like software things that need to be fixed here and there. Um, but if you need, if you want to just game um, and get basic gaming functionality, it's all there now. You can access all the menus, you can play your games, um, FPS mode works, the trackpad works, the, all the buttons can uh, be made to work except for these two Legion buttons, which I'm assuming progress will be made on them. But all things considered, this device came out less than a week ago and it's already basically fully functional in, uh, in Linux, which I think is kind of impressive. Um, yeah, so if anyone's thinking of getting one of these because they want a Steam Deck alternative with a really nice screen, it's not a bad option, I would say. Anyways, that's it.